How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Well, good morning. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear. Happy Sunday. <laughs> Shannon, how many do you think I can get him to do? Okay, I don't think I can get six, but we'll see. Well, good morning and welcome to church. I'm so glad that we are here together to worship God and to begin this season of Advent. Um, just a quick note, Pastor Deb is out with a little ear, nose, and throat infection, so keep her in your prayers this week. Um, but now we will take a moment to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. We begin in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please stand as you are able and we'll join in our opening hymn number 244, verses 1 and 4. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who comes to wake us from sleep, who leads us into the light of grace. Let us, oh, amen. Let us prepare the way of the Lord by confessing our sin against God and neighbor. We'll take a moment for silent confession. God of all time, we confess that we have not prepared your, for your merciful reign among us. We ignore our neighbors in need and fail in the labor of justice and peace. In your mercy, forgive us. Grant us wisdom to welcome your light and to seek the things that will endure until Christ comes again in glory. Amen. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. In Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven and all things are made new. Rejoice in this good news. Amen. Today we begin the celebration of Advent, a time to prepare for the celebration of Jesus' birth. Just as we get ready for guests to visit or the arrival of a new family member, here at church we prepare to welcome Jesus on his birthday. During Advent, we can put away the distractions of the world and focus on God's promise to us. Today, we focus on the candle of hope. Hope is a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul. With the birth of Christ, the hope of the world is brought to earth. When we light the first Advent candle, we thank God for the great gift of hope given in Jesus Christ, the child who comes to lead us.
Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now I invite you to turn to those around and share a greeting of peace and welcome, whether that's a high five, a handshake, a hug, whatever. Anxious in expectancy, marveling the mystery of Jesus' face appearing here on earth. Waiting for the baby born, God's son taking human form, being cared for by the ones he'll save.
Today's lesson is from Isaiah chapter 64. You'll find the lesson printed in your bulletin. Isaiah 64 verses 1 through 9. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways, but you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. Word of God, word of life. Please stand for the singing of the gospel acclamation found printed in your worship bulletin. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, In those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branches become tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near, at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows. Neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge each with his work, and commands the doorkeepers to be on watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated, and I'd like to invite the children forward for a children's sermon. Come up, everybody. Ooh, we got a good group today. Great to see 
Great to see everyone here. Are we all ready to listen? <laughs> okay, good. Here comes a few more troops. Oh my goodness, what an exciting time this is. Did everybody eat enough turkey? <laughs> oh, we had turkey. And hopefully we took time to say thank you for all the wonderful things that we have, right? And today we're going to be starting a new exciting time by making some things for Advent because what season is coming? Christmas is coming. And I know if I wanted to spend a half hour up here, I could go around and everybody would tell me what they want for Christmas. Raise your hand if you already know what you want for Christmas. Yes. And everybody's got a smile on their face and they're raising their hands. And we want this and we want this and we want this. Yes, we're talking remote control, sure. But if we get serious, we can talk about what we need. We need food and water, don't we? Yep. We need shelter, and we need clothes. And because we're Christian, we need the love of Jesus in our heart, right? Those are the things we need. So let's stop and think. I want, can we all whine for something we want? I want. Can you do that with me? I want. And you know we all do it. Mom, I really do need this. I, I really, I really. But the bottom line is there is a big difference between I want and I need. So that brings me to the basket. This basket comes from Tanzania in Africa, long ways away. And if you notice, it's large, and it has the Christian cross on it. And in the next few weeks, and maybe in the next few months, I've got some ideas of what we can do. We're going to talk about some children whose mothers look like these women. A woman just like this made the basket. And the mothers of these children are trying their best to give their children what they need. They need food and clean water. They need a place for protection, for shelter. They need clothes. And more than anything else, they need, they want an education. And that's where you guys come in. Our Savior's Lutheran Church has a long history with a school called Kikatiti. And during this season of things that we want, we have an opportunity to help the children of Kikatiti their wants and needs are the same. We're going to find ways that we can help them with food and clean water. We're going to find ways to help them come to our school. Can we say kikatiti? That's a hard word. Kikatiti. We're going to try to find ways to have money so they can come to kikatiti, kikatiti school to have an education. So, in this wonderful season, we have a wonderful project. It's called Helping Kikatiti School. And you're going to see this basket in a lot of different places. Wouldn't it be lots of fun if we could fill this basket with all kinds of stuff for the kids in need of Kikatiti? Let's fold our hands. Dear Jesus, Help us remember all the things that we are thankful for. And help us to find ways to help the children at Kikatiti School. Find ways to help the children at Kikatiti School. Wow, what good listeners we were today. Let's put our hands up. Wants, needs. We can think of all the things that we want during this season. 
but let's also think of the things that we need and the children of Kikatiti need, okay? We'll see you down at the Advent Festival. Now, the Board of Missions wanted me to talk just about two seconds to the rest of you. Um, a lot of you are familiar with me, and I'm familiar with you, and you know all about Kikatiti School for the last, wow, it's almost going on 30 years now. But there are some of you who are new, and we will be finding ways to get you introduced to the needs and the things that we do for Kikatiti School. There's a small blurb in your grab-and-go today, and I've written something more extensive for sidelights to get you involved with it. And we'll have the same sign-up sheet with all the different things that you can give to the children of Kikatiti School um, between now and maybe sometime in January or so. The one thing that I always like to emphasize, and it's just stuck with me forever, Toretto is our headmaster, and he has been there for so many years, and he is probably one of the most faithful people that I have ever met. And we've always had our problem with water. Yes, the kids need food, and you can buy bags of corn. Yes, the kids need tuition, and if you feel like it's too hefty for you to do a day student or a full-time student on your own, get together with some friends or family and uh, offer a scholarship to one of the kids. But the one thing they need more than anything else is clean water. And those of you who know me and know what we've tried to do for these kids, we've spent a lot of time and a lot of money trying to get these kids clean water. And we're not there yet. And what Toretto said once has stuck with me forever. He said, we can drink the water every day and die slowly or we cannot drink the water and die quickly. And that kind of sums it up of the needs and wants of Kikatiti. So we're hoping that between now and whenever we can send something over, we will. And in closing, I want you to understand that with Kikatiti, there is no middleman that you are able to give the money, we send it over, and the love of Christ goes directly to those kids. Uh, the Miro Diocese takes 2% to do the handling, but the rest of it goes to the kids. So thank you. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So, I love this time of year. Is everybody else as excited as I am? I, I love Thanksgiving, I love Christmas, I love Advent, I love New Year's, I love all of these wonderful celebrations. So. For all of you, whose favorite holiday is Thanksgiving? Anybody out here? Not too many? No? How about New Year's? Everybody loves New Year's. That's everybody's. No? Okay, fine. Christmas? Oh, there we go. There's, there's a lot more. There's a lot more. How about whose favorite is Advent? Woo! Yeah, I love Advent. Advent is my favorite because it's weird. It is, you guys. It's a weird season in the church because all throughout Advent, we think about the wonderful lights. You know, we go to the, the parade, uh, the parade of lights, and there's cars filled with lights. Our downtown is lit up, and there's beautiful garland, and we think of warm pie and nice fires and snowy evenings. And then we come to church, and we hear the readings we just heard. We think of these lovely, lovely things, and then we hear, judgment is coming. Fear, the stars will fall from the sky, the heavens won't give forth their light. It's kind of weird. 
it's weird to hear those two things together. That joy in preparation for Christmas, but those fearful words that we heard from Isaiah and from Mark. But that's why it is such a great season. It's a season of preparation. Now, in the church, we have a couple other seasons of preparation. We have Lent. Uh, that was originally meant for people getting ready uh, to be baptized at the Easter vigil service. And now we use it as a time to prepare to celebrate Easter. Or the season during the summer, the ordinary days. Those are literally just a countdown from the festival of Easter to the next festival in the fall. It's a time of preparation. But Advent is a very special time of preparation. It's a time of preparation for change. Now again, participation is required here. Who loves change? How oh, weird, nobody, huh? We take this time of Advent to prepare for the world to be flipped upside down. And it makes us uncomfortable. Because we hear readings like that and we think, are we ready for this? Are we ready for the world to be turned upside down? Are we ready for the celebration of Christmas? To help get myself to understand Advent, I was thinking about it like a first century person. So imagine you're a shepherd out in the field. And one day, you notice the days are getting shorter. And the nights are getting longer. And the weather is getting colder. And it's getting harsher. You see the sun less and less. It's a terrifying thing. It makes you, it puts you on edge. But then something happens. Something happens and the world seems bright again. The days get longer. You begin to celebrate the warmth that you have. That's the change that we're preparing for. But not some heavenly light, or not, not some light from the stars, but the light of heaven, the light of God to come among us. We're getting ready for that change. So why, why do we need these scary readings to help us with that? Came up with a metaphor, and I like it, but we'll see. Advent is like a salted caramel. Do you know what I'm talking about? A salted caramel? You get a lovely little caramel, you cover it in chocolate, and then you sprinkle big hunks of salt on top. Now, I, I love them now, as you can tell. Um, they are delicious. But the first time I saw a salted caramel, I thought, who ruined my candy? Who would put salt on something so perfect as caramel and chocolate? And then I try it, and I realize that caramel is so sweet, and chocolate is so sweet. And it's so sweet that you sometimes can't even tell how sweet it is. So you put in a little salt. You put in a little bitterness. And it makes you realize just how wonderful it can be. Advent is that salt. It's that salt on our Christmas caramel. It shows us just how wonderful that celebration can be. So we dwell in this time of darkness and fear, knowing that each week we light another candle. It gets a little brighter and it prepares us to celebrate that wonderful joy. So how do we prepare? This last week, Alyssa and I, for the first time, hosted Thanksgiving at our house, and so we were trying to get everything ready. We had to clean, we had to cook, 
We had to hide those boxes that are still somehow in our house. We've been here almost, a, or we've been in our house almost a year and we still haven't unpacked them. We had to find a place to hide. We tried to get ready. And we got ready by remembering what we needed. Did we have enough chairs around the table for everybody? Did we have sage for the turkey? Did we have pies for the dessert? Did we have enough salt? That's how we got ready for Thanksgiving. So how do we get ready for Christmas? Advent reminds us of what we need. It reminds us that we need a Savior. We've all fallen short. We've all sinned. We aren't perfect people. And in Advent, we remember that so that at Christmas, we know that someone is here for us with that bitterness, with that salt, comes the hope for light and help, the hope of our Savior. So in this season, savor that salt, because soon the sweetness of celebration will come. Let us pray. Holy God, we give you thanks for this time of reflection and time of preparation. Guide us through this time, help us and teach us so that we can know the true joy that is coming. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and quell our fears with your joy. Amen. And now I invite you to stand as you are able and join in our hymn of the day, number 715. Verses 1, 2, and 5. Let us join in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed found printed in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Welcoming God's reign of righteousness and mercy, let us pray for the people of every time and every place. Almighty God, your merciful rule encompasses all the world as we gather for you, as we gather for worship and safety. We pray for places where the church is persecuted. Watch over your people as they witness to your good news. Come, Holy Spirit, we wait for you. Give bountiful pastures, safety, and health to herds, livestock, and animals. May our care for all of your creation reflect your shepherding love for all you have made. Come, Holy Spirit, we wait for you. We pray for international organizations that shine your light in places of strife. Lead relief and aid workers, leaders and volunteers to seek the lost and provide safety. Come, Holy Spirit, we wait for you. Shepherd your church to welcome the stranger and the immigrant in our midst. Call all your people to welcome, clothe, feed, and visit those in need, just as you have provided for the lost and despairing throughout the ages. We pray especially for people with heart conditions and for Dean Nissen, for Carol Putnam, Charlie Bornhoft, Katie Sensky, Tom Hansen, Sharon Halkey, and Lucy Oppitz. Be with Scott Kathman as his family mourns the loss of his brother Keith. Come, Holy Spirit, we wait for you. Receive these prayers in the hopes and concerns of our heart, O God, as we entrust into your loving care all for whom we pray. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated as we give back to God what was first given to us.
Let us pray. Savior of the nations, come. Make your home here in us. Feed us with your love that our faith shine ever new and our lives reveal your light. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We remember on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks and broke it, giving it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Christ took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. This morning, communion will be served by intinction, meaning you'll receive a piece of bread or a gluten-free wafer upon request, and you can dip that either in the chalice that contains red wine or the chalice that contains white grape juice. Christ has prepared this meal for all of us, so all are welcome at this table. Our ushers will release you row by row. Holy God has fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. May it strengthen us for all of our days to come and keep us growing in the joy of the Lord. Amen. So there are quite a few announcements this morning. First of all, Advent Festival. It's going to be awesome. They're making some wonderful crafts downstairs. And the age limit on that is what? There is no age limit. Head on down and make some fun Christmas ornaments. Okay. I expect to see you all down there. I'm just saying. Um, We did have a scheduled Advent class that was going to be in the upper room, but Pastor Deb was teaching that, and since she's out sick this week, we will start it next week. Um, What else? Next Sunday night at 5 p.m., we'll be having our Sunday, uh, Sunday evening supper club, or Sunday night supper club. Whichever, I don't remember. Um, But it's at 5 o'clock next weekend. Uh, Bring something to share, and we'll have a great time just talking with each other and sharing in that wonderful food and fellowship. Also, we have our December sign-ups out there on that little table by the big bulletin board, so please sign up to help in worship. We've got some big services coming up. I think it's uh, uh, Christmas. Yes. Those are the big services. So please uh, take a look at your schedule and see when you can help in worship. Uh, Also, oh, the last thing we have. Uh, Dwayne Lombrecht is going to give us uh, an update on the endowment committee. So come on up. Thank you, Pastor Dave. Good morning. I'm Dwayne Lambrecht member of the Endowment Committee. Additional members are Harold Remy, our chair, Charlie Bornhoff, Linda Heine, Darlene Meyer, and Marla Zita. Pastor Deb's an ex-officio member. I was asked to give you a brief history and update on where we're at. The fund was established in 1996 by the late Richard T. Rodenberg, who felt that our church needed a tool to better accommodate major gifts to the church. His initial gift of Pepsi stock became the financial basis for the fund, and that amount was, um, depending on the price of the stock, in the thirty dollars to $40,000 range that was our seed money to start the fund. Only interest from the fund can be used for causes of the church. During the past year, the committee has developed a brochure, which many of you have received, along with a letter outlining 
uh, parts of the fund. In addition, we developed the criteria for distribution of the earnings along with an application form for requests. This coming Sunday, December 3rd, Amy Bigot, Regional Gift Planner for the ELCA, will be giving additional information during her temple talks. In addition, she'll be available for private discussions. Thanks for listening, for your prayerful consideration. Thank you for that. Yeah, so that's next Sunday. Amy Bigot will be here speaking about the endowment committee and the, endow the endowment fund. Um, she's a wonderful speaker, and she'll have a lot of good things to say. So mark that on your calendars as well. Now I invite you to stand to receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's join in our sending hymn, number 542, verses 1 and 4. Go in peace, prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>